Welcome everyone to another episode of Amazed by the Quran where I share with you what I find amazing about the Quran. Today uh, is a literary feature of the Quran uh, that is to me quite baffling actually because you know you have uh, surahs of the Quran that are revealed at different times. They're far apart from each other even in terms of location. The two surahs I want to compare with you is Sad which is in the 30s and Qaf which is surah number 50. So they're just decently apart from each other. And you find sometimes that there are ayahs in these surahs that are very similar to one another, but there are some textual differences. So he'll say the same thing, but actually more accurately, he'll say almost the same thing, right? So in Surah Qaf, he says, بَالْعَجِبُ أَنْ جَاءَهُمْ مُنْذِرٌ مِّنْهُمْ فَقَالَ الْكَافِرُونَ هَذَا شَيْءٌ عَجِيبٌ uh, Rather, they, are, they find it strange that a warner came to them from among themselves. Uh, let's qualify that statement. A warner came to them from among themselves because they, they thought of warners as someone to come from the outside to bring news from a faraway enemy. I've scouted the enemy, they're coming. And so he comes and he lets them know there's a danger. But Rasul is from among them and he's telling them of this faraway danger that th that's coming if they don't listen, if they don't heed Allah's warning. So they say, how can there be a warner from among us? فَقَالَ الْكَافِرُونَ هَذَا شَيْءٌ عَجِيبٌ So this believer said, this is a strange thing. So the statement is, the disbeliever said, this is a strange thing. Now let's compare this a little bit. وَعَجِبُوا أَنْ جَاءَهُمْ مُنْذِرٌ مِّنْهُمْ And they found it strange that a warner came to them from among themselves. Sound familiar? It was almost exactly the same in Surah Qaf. قَالَ الْكَافِرُونَ هَذَا سَاحِرٌ كَذَّابٌ uh, Disbeliever said, this is a magician and a perpetual liar. Now that's new. That was not in Qaf, right? أَجَعَلَ الْآلِهَةَ إِلَهًا وَاحِدًا did, did he take all of our gods and turn them into just one? Also not something we found in the previous. Inna hadha la shay'un hujab That certainly is a pretty strange thing. That we found before. So there are the beginning and ending elements. They found it strange that a warner came to them is there in both. And this believer saying that this is something strange is found in both. Right? But let's count. In the first case, they found it strange that a warner came. Fine. In the second case, they also found it strange that a warner came. But additionally, they said this is a magician. Now you would think magician is an insult to the Prophet but actually, if you analyze it, it's a compliment. It's an acknowledgement that what he has to say cannot be explained away through common sense. There is something mysterious, something inexplicable, something in the unseen, something unseen to the naked eye that's going on here. And when you talk about something that is beyond reason to you, you cannot make common sense of it. You call it what? Magic. And think about that. What what rabbit out of the hat is he pulling? He's saying words. How are words considered magic? The effect that it's having on people can only be described as magic. So that's in and in of itself, in that insult, embedded is actually an acknowledgement of the divine power of the Qur'an, a higher power. It's supernatural, at least that much they admit, right? The second thing they called him is a uh, perpetual liar. Kadhab. Kadhab means someone who lies over and over and over again. Like a khabaz is someone who make, makes bread over and over again. Or a wahhab is someone who gives gifts over and over again. So he makes lies over and over again. They found that very strange. Why? And by the way, in that insult, embedded in it is also a compliment. Why? Because a liar tries to sell you a lie. You don't buy it. Now you know he's a liar. He knows he can't sell it to you again. So he finds a new customer. And he goes and lies to them. If, the, he, if he gets called out over there, he's not going to come back to the two of you. He's going to go find a third sucker. That's what a liar does. But this man, we're accusing him of being a liar. But he comes back and he tells us the same thing again. And we call him a liar. And he comes back and he tells us the same thing again. We've never seen a liar like this. Liars, once you call him out, leave you alone. How is he a continual, perpetual liar? And it's not even, by the way, when, you get, when one lie gets caught, what does a liar do? Goes on to a new lie. When that one gets caught, he goes on to a new lie. But this liar, we don't understand, he's sticking to the same quote-unquote lie. He's not changing his story at all. The, the commitment of the Prophet ﷺ, the consistency of his message والسلام, his relentlessness, and his unwillingness to give up on these people is captured in their insult, kadhab. Yes, from their point of view, it is an insult. But deep inside it is actually something about the Prophet ﷺ. Anyway, then the, th the, the next, so they called him magician, they called him continual liar or repeated liar. Third, أَجَعَلَ الْآلِهَةَ إِلَهًا وَاحِدًا Did he take all of our gods and make them into one? What do you, all this 
this entire mythology is no good? How are you going to get rid of all that? Just one? How are you going to survive with just one? You know? This is, they found it strange. Now, if you compare, there are three things additional that they found strange to the previous text, yes? Because in, in the previous text, they thought a warner came and that's weird. In this one, they thought a warner has come, it's weird. But additionally, he's a magician. Additionally, a liar. And uh, thirdly, he took all of our gods and made them into one. Now keep in mind, three. Okay, go back. Disbeliever said, Hada shay'un ajib. This is a strange thing. That's what they said. In this ayah, it says, Inna hadha la shay'un ujab. Now, pay attention to this. First of all, this ayah says, no doubt about it. The first ayah said, this is a strange thing. This one's saying, no doubt about it. This is a strange thing. There's one additional layer of emphasis. In what words? No doubt, inna. Okay. Inna hadha la shay. No doubt, truly this is a strange thing. Truly, the la in la shay is not found in the first ayah. So how many additional layers of emphasis? Two. There they said strange, ajib. Here they say ujab, extremely strange. Ujab is a hyperbolized, empowered form of the word ajib. Third layer of emphasis. This statement is three times more emphatic than the former statement, and this statement has three more things they found strange compared to the first. How do you keep track of that? How do you say that statement and this statement are very similar, except this one has three additional things, so the emphasizers at the end should correspond. And how do you say something and keep in mind, wait, a few months ago I said this, and therefore I should emphasize three more times here compared. And all of this in speech. Like, <laughs> you're not reciting, he's not even like referencing the other ayah. This is another surah altogether. <laughs> And this is happening in the Qur'an. Things are said, and things are said slightly differently. And if you analyze the language, you're just left baffled. Like, how does the Qur'an keep up with this level of accuracy, this level of consideration? The comparative textual analyses in the Qur'an actually just leave you with, this can only be divine. That's, that's what it leaves me with every time I study this stuff. This is why he says, SubhanAllah, why don't they reflect deeply on the Qur'an? Look behind. The words. Because if they would, Had it been from other than Allah, they would have found a lot of conflict in it. You keep finding consistency on top of consistency in ways that, linguistically speaking, I've never seen any, anything else, anything even close. May Allah Azza wa Jal continue to make us amazed by this incredible book. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.